Yo, what's good? What's going on, everyone? Hope you're having a great day. It's Neff, and I'm finally back with another video. It's been a couple months, uh, but we got some big news yesterday about the upcoming 10.2 patch. So yesterday, pretty much everything got released about 10.2. Uh, you can now hop on the 10.2 PTR and test out the new tier sets, uh, the new weapons and trinkets. I say weapons because there are a ton of different weapons in the new raid that have like special procs. Unfortunately for Demon Hunter, um, we can only use one of them, but it's a fist weapon. Uh, but it is a pretty good weapon and it is unique equipped so you can only have one of them unfortunately uh, but we'll talk about all that stuff later they also announced demon hunter talent changes so there currently isn't any changes on the ptr that we can test out but hopefully you know they'll be coming really really soon and then uh we can go through all that stuff uh but before we get into the video i do want to shout out my ui if you like the ui in the video it's available for twitch subs and patrons and now it's available for uh discord supporters so you can join my discord and get the ui straight from there uh, I think on Discord it's like $3.99, on Patreon it's like $2.99, and Twitch you can use a Prime or um, a regular sub. And then you basically get everything you see in the video. Uh, you get my weak auras, my shadow unit frames, or LVUI profiles, whichever version you want to use. I have an installer for both. And then my details, everything. Like You basically get everything uh, that you could ever want from a UI. And it is updated for all specs in the game, so you don't need to worry about that. And uh, yeah, so if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description to my Twitch, my Patreon, and my Discord. And um, yeah, so yeah, sorry for the quick self promo. Um, you know, I, I do that sometimes. Uh, you know, this video is not sponsored, so any support, I very much appreciate it. I'm blah, 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 blah. Let's just get straight into the video and look at the new Havoc Demon Hunter tier set. So the two set bonus. Each slash of blade dance has a 50% chance to throw glaive an enemy for 35% damage. Uh, so when I first read this, the first thing that came to mind was, does this proc soul rend? Yes, it does. Uh, does it work with bouncing glaives? It does work with bouncing glaives. It works with furious throws, accelerated blade, and soul rend. So all of our soul, all of our throw glaive talents, it does work with. So this two set, looking at it initially, you would think would give us like insane AOE scaling, but the way it actually works is each slash can only trigger one throw glaive. And after that first glaive has been thrown from that slash, it can't throw another glaive. And it seems that it doesn't matter how many targets you're hitting, each slash just has a flat 50% chance to trigger the glaive. It doesn't matter if you're hitting one target or 20 targets. So like, it doesn't count each hit. It just counts the, the slash. It's just a flat 50% chance to throw a glaive, no matter how many targets. And then on the next slash, you know, another 50% chance. So Blade Dance does four total slashes. Um, so you can throw out a total of four glaives each blade dance. Now we'll finally move on to the four set bonus. Throw glaive reduces the remaining cooldown of the hunt by 0.4 seconds and the hunt's damage over time effect lasts four seconds longer. So yes, the two set throw glaives do give us CDR on the hunt. Uh, so each blade dance if all four slashes proc a glaive, we can get a total of 1.6 seconds of CDR each blade dance. Making our set bonus around the hunt uh, seems like a really weird one. I do like it because it's something we always take and it doesn't really force us into something that we haven't been playing. But the hunt in its current iteration doesn't do much in raid at all. Uh, so our tier is for sure, you know, like a cleave tier bonus that'll be better in Mythic Plus uh, as our class is right now. You know, but that's pretty obvious, but I don't want to get into it if I like it or not yet because we do have a decent rework of our talents coming up soon. And uh, I don't want to make any, you know, initial you know, doomer fucking opinions uh, as of right now. Let's just wait until we get our new talent rework, uh, or, or at least the first iteration of it, and um, see what they have planned. Next, we'll quickly look at the Vengeance tier set. Uh, the two set bonus is Sigil of Flames periodic damage has a chance to flare up, shattering an additional soul fragment from a target and dealing additional damage. Each 40 fury you spin reduces its cooldown by one second. Obviously, as we're talking about Sigil of Flame. So, I personally hate playing around sigils, you know, I'm just not a fan of it. Um, this two set bonus isn't going to change the way you play Vengeance much, um, but basically you're just going to be pressing Sigil of Flame on cooldown now, and that's it. Uh, the four set bonus is when you attack a target afflicted by Sigil of Flame, your damage and healing are increased by 2% and your maximum health is increased by 2% for 8 seconds, stacking up to 5. So you can see in the video here, above my soul fragments, I'm tracking this new four piece. Uh, so you can really have a really high uptime on this bonus. Um, it looks like it does refresh when you're at five stacks and you attack something new that's affected by a sigil of flame. So I'm soul cleaving to get to five stacks, then I spirit bomb to hit everything around me and uh, refresh the buff. I don't think it's, it's gonna be crazy strong, to be honest. It's gonna be really, really bad in single target. 
Um, but yeah, we'll have, we'll have to see what happens uh, to Vengeance with the talent rework and everything that goes on there. Which Vengeance really, really needs its talent rework very bad. So um, we'll see how all that plays out. So now we're just going to take a look at some of the new gear we'll probably be rocking in 10.2. Uh, so first off, we have this fist weapon, Thorn Collar Claw, uh, that has an equip effect. Your damaging melee abilities have a low chance to inflict Thorn Spirit, which deals nature damage over 15 seconds. Using damaging melee abilities against the target with Thorn Spirit inflicts nature damage split between all enemies within 5 yards of the target. So this is kind of weird, uh, because... With our tier set, you know, it looks like they're going to try to take Havoc in a Throwglaive direction. And um, this weapon, it procs off of damaging melee abilities, which I don't think Throwglaive counts as a melee ability because it is, you know, has a range to it. Um, so I don't think it'll proc off Throwglaive, which is kind of unfortunate. Hopefully we'll just see like a change to your damaging abilities. Um, but yeah. Uh, this effect does not seem to scale with any means necessary, but it does do some decent damage and some good cleave at the cost of a small amount of secondary stats and primary stats. Right now, for my testing, it seems to be doing about the same damage as our boots with the embellishment on. Um, so I think we'll for sure be using this weapon. And like I said earlier, it is a unique equip, uh, so we can't run two of them. So I think we'll be running one of these in a double time from the dungeon uh, Dawn of the Infinite, which they both have proc effects but the one from Dawn of the Infinite, you don't lose secondary stats or primary. Um, so first off, with just a tiny amount of testing, this trinket from the final boss, Farak, uh, does crazy damage in AoE. It's called Augury of the Primal Flame. Um, it scales very well with us since we really like crit. We get we crit a lot, especially with I-Beam. Um, once we I-Beam and you're running, the looks can kill, so I-Beam always crits. Um, when this trinket procs, it basically consumes the entire amount from the trinket instantly, even in AoE. So potentially the faster you can consume this trinket proc, uh, maybe you get more procs faster. Uh, I'm not too sure about that. Um, I have had instances where I've consumed it and then gotten a proc right away. I've had back-to-back -back procs, but um, there probably is like a hidden procs per minute or ICD, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I think we'll be running this for sure. This gives a ton of crit and it just, you know, scales pretty well with crit. Um, next is Pip's Emerald Friendship Badge. So this is a stat stick. It can grant mastery, verse, or crit, but cannot grant haste. Um, your spells and abilities have a chance to empower this by a huge amount for 12 seconds, granting 3,300 of whichever stat you choose. So I have a feeling from Raid, uh, we're probably gonna be running this in the Farak Trinket as of right now. Not sure if it's intended, but right now, as you can see in the video, I'm looking at this quick week where I made, you can basically have 100% uptime on the empowered buffs and they get cycled through randomly. One time I got crit three times in a row and also by looking at the weak aura, uh, the value on the bottom is the amount of stat you're getting and it seems to decay over that 12 seconds. Um, but yeah, basically having 100% uptime on this, uh, <laughs> is it's a very, very good stat stick. Probably one of the best stat sticks uh, we've ever had. Another potential trinket that we could run as an on use is um, Ashes of the Imbersoul, which is basically the Iridius Fragment from Halls of Infusion. It grants primary stat for 20 seconds, decaying every 3 seconds. Then after the buff is gone, you lose the amount of haste the trinket has on it baseline. Uh, so this is a 2 minute cooldown as of right now. This would only be viable with First of the Illidari, making meta a 2 minute CD, which we'll never take uh, in this iteration. But we are getting talent changes, so possibly, you know, next tier we might see a two minute meta. Um, we might like this trinket, who knows? Um, but this trinket is gonna be very strong for any two minute specs. Uh, then we have Infernal Signet Brand. This one has a very strange effect. Um, basically, your abilities have a chance to brand the target, dealing fire damage over six seconds. And when it does, you get a buff called Fire Starter that stacks up to 15 times. Each time you brand the target, you get a stack of that fire starter buff, and then each stack you have increases the damage of that brand. So over long fights, this trinket may be good, um, but while you're above five stacks, you also damage yourself for 50% of the damage that brand does to your target. And while at 15 max stacks, um, this brand cleaves enemies around your target, dealing 10% of that brand damage to them, and uh, that damage is split though. So 10% of the brand damage is split between enemies around it. 
it's not going to have very good scaling in AoE. And the stacks do fall off every five seconds out of combat. So it's, it's a bit better than Anvil um, in that regard. Because Anvil, once you got out of combat and you know you're out of combat for so long, uh, every stack would just fall off. It wasn't like a. So this trigger is interesting, but I don't think it'll be very good in its current iteration, honestly. Uh, so the final DPS we'll look at is Bandolier of Twisted Blades. So this is just an on-use damage trinket. It deals initial physical damage, and then after three seconds, the blades return to you, dealing shadow flame damage split between the target and all enemies in its path. Uh, the damage is increased per enemy struck up to five. Um, right now, for my testing uh, on PTR, this thing is just not good at all. Um, but who knows? I could be wrong. <laughs> Yeah, right now it just doesn't do much damage at all. There is also two tank trinkets that we'll look at. The first one you'll have a chance to get is um, Gift of the Urktas. Uh, taking damage from nearby enemies causes you to counterattack for damage and gain one stack of Rising Rage, granting main stat stacking up to 30 times. At 30 or max stacks, you gain Fury of Urktas for 8 seconds, counterattacking all blows and regening health. So I don't think this is going to make you immune to melees. I think this is just going to guarantee the trinket doing damage every time you take damage uh, for those eight seconds. And then, you know, you get the health regen. This one's OK. Uh, it's probably won't be used by many people. Uh, it's not going to be very sought after. I don't think most tank trinkets like this aren't. Um, and same goes for the next one we'll look at. Um, so this trinket is an on use that has an equip effect. The equip effect is deal shadow flame damage to you and nearby enemies every three seconds while in combat. The on use is given to the rage heart, absorbing damage but suffering shadow flame damage and lashing out at a nearby enemy every one second. The deal shadow flame damage split between nearby enemies on a two minute cooldown. Damage is increased uh, per enemy struck up to five. So yeah, like I said, I don't think these trinkets are going to be very good to be honest. Most tank trinkets uh, from the raids aren't or from any source really aren't. Um, unless it's like a cheat death. So I think as a tank, you know, 90% of them will be running the cheat death from the Dawn of the Infinite and then like a DPS trinket uh, from, you know, whoever's whatever, uh, whichever one will scale with verse the most, uh, probably. So that's it for the tier sets, unique weapon and trinkets in the raid that we can use. Uh, now let's look at what the new Demon Hunter tier set actually looks like. The LFR set is honestly my favorite from the raid. I love the blue. Blue is like, you know, my favorite color uh, behind red. But the helmet looks fucking awesome. The helmet looks so good, uh, except it makes you look like fucking daddy long neck from the side. Um, the PVP sets both look really, really good. Um, I think this set shits on the past three tiers of actual tier we've had. Um, yeah, I, I think this one is very, very good. Uh, the PvP sets, like I said, look really good. So I might have to be in the market for, you know, Glad Bush. You know, somebody hit me up. Uh, the Glad set just looks so good. The blue, gold, and the it, it just looks so good. And apparently, someone told me this set is based off Sargeras's armor. Uh, which, yeah, you know, I'll put some pictures on the screen here. You can be the judge of that. The shoulders do look pretty identical. Um, some other parts look identical, but. Yeah, if it is, it's pretty cool. Now I just want to go through a few things, like some changes I personally would like to see with the new talent tree rework. Let's just look at the talent tree right now. Um, I'm on PTR. So I think I think we just give up on Fel Barrage. I think we get rid of this talent. Um, or we change it so it scales with the amount of enemies and you know it does more damage on one target or two targets and then you know it scales, does more and more damage. It needs some type of scaling factor for it to be used over some of our other talents uh, in single target. Because in single target, it literally just it's it's a dead it's a dead button. But over your other options, it's just not worth to take this. Um, so Fel Barrage, I think, is just kind of dead in its current iteration. Hopefully, um, it is a sick ability. Hopefully, we'll see some changes to it. But if they do not want to go in that direction, I really enjoyed playing Fel Bombardment with the enemies necessary throw glaive build Feld bombardment i had probably the most fun i've had on havoc uh since i started playing the game uh with the Feld bombardment legendary with this build uh during the dragonflight pre-patch so i would really like to see Feld bombardment come back it was a fuck ton of fun 
just you know stacking that shit up and throwing out you know 10 different glaives and then just they're just bouncing everywhere it, it was really fun for me at least so i think that would be really cool i think first of the illadari should definitely see some love um they dev they tried adding 10 percent verse to it uh it was just not enough at all um a cooldown like meta being three minutes or four minutes baseline without this rush of chaos um it's just not impactful enough it's just not impactful enough uh cooldown like stuff like you know nether portal or incarn but yeah meta compares nowhere near to those other three minute talents you know it, it does nowhere near the amount of damage as um those other those other abilities the three minute cooldowns so i think meta should just baseline i mean you know be three minutes and then with this it makes it two minutes just get rid of first of the illadari make meta a two minute cooldown um do a little bit of balancing just make meta a two minute cooldown it's one of the least impactful cooldowns in the game and it's three minutes uh with a talent and four minutes baseline so I think we should definitely see some more iterations on the metamorphosis cooldown. Um, in my opinion, stuff like Unbound Chaos, I fucking hate using our mobility for damage. Um, it's just very cringe. People say Demon Hunter is the most mobile class in the game. You know, it definitely is. Um, but when you're Fell Rush and, you know, your eventual retreat and basically all of your mobility is on cooldown uh, because you're using it for damage because... You know, you kind of have to with our talent setup. Um, we are one of the least mobile classes in the game. Or, you know, we're like men of the pack. You know, we have the double jump glide, which makes us pretty mobile compared to classes that just have to run. I digress. Anyways, using mobility for damage is fucking cringe and I hate it. And it's just not fun. Just dashing around. It, it it was fun at first, but <laughs> it's just annoying now, right? I think uh, most people will agree with me. It was it was fun at first uh, when you first started playing Demon Hunter, dashing around, playing momentum. It was fun, but now it's just fucking annoying with how uh, with how most of the mechanics work in the game nowadays, um, especially in Mythic. If you t if you have a circle and you take it onto somebody like Dathia, uh, you spread a fucking mechanic. You just fuck over the entire raid or if there's a mechanic like sarkareth when there's holes all over the fucking ground and my team or my raid is making it a fucking mine war zone on the ground where i can't even dash at all anywhere in the in p3 uh so i can't do you know my full damage but everybody else can because they don't have to dash around like crazy um just shit like that where spread mechanics um and shit like Sark, you know, holes on the ground, stuff like that is, <laughs> it feels so fucking bad to play around tactical retreat initiative and unbound chaos and momentum image. It, it feels so fucking bad. Like I can't, I cannot iterate that enough. It is terrible. It feels like shit. It is not good. It just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what else I can say. It just does not feel good. Whew, I'm sweating. Talking about this shit had me sweating uh <laughs> fucking so what man isolated prey i think this should be changed um not sure what we could do for it uh but it only being usable uh in single target and then when our fodder procs uh it's just a dead talent doesn't work anymore um feels really fucking bad and that brings me to fodder um fodder actually fucking sucks as well i hate playing around this i hate searching around for my demon soul even with the changes um on shit like magmarax or just any fight where you have to stay with your group like the scarn the scarn is a better way better um example uh like during tactical if i get a fodder proc and for some reason my demon dies during the tactical destruction and my the boss is on the the new side of the room and my demon soul is on the opposite side of the room that thing is just long gone i'm not fucking running across the entire zone just to go get that fucking demon thing and then lose half the buff up time just for running back so this ability is fucking dog shit make it in on use or just completely get rid of it nobody likes this fucking thing and um elysian decree dead talent nobody wants to play it it's only good on five targets uh no more no less uh so pretty much you know completely rework this or just delete it 
I'm okay with Serrated Glaive. The new Serrated Glaive cha uh, changes are pretty good. Um, Cycle of Hatred. I know people don't like Cycle of Hatred for some reason. Um, it does promote like Chaos Strike spam. Um, but, you know, they change it so it works with Blade Dance and Glaive Tempest. I'm a fan of Cycle of Hatred, honestly. I like getting the CDR and I-Beam and just I-Beaming as much as I can. Um, I-Beam is a sick ability. We need changes to this. This needs to be in a better position. We can never take Netherwalk without losing, you know, at least 5% damage. Um, Desperate Instincts, Dog Shit Talent, um, we we'll never run it. Um, we can never take Fell Eruption anymore, again, without losing, like, 5% damage. Um... Like the Boomy was in this situation at the beginning of the expansion and it was literally fixed within like a fucking a couple weeks. And we've been dealing with not being our, having not being able to take our immunity or our singer or our single target CC uh, for the entire expansion so far. I don't know why this hasn't been changed yet. Um, but yeah, this definitely needs a fucking change. Thank you. This uh, misery and defeat shit it was a cool idea. But again, you know, in my opinion, I hate playing around sigils and I wish this wasn't a thing. Uh, maybe I don't know what you could do with this. Make misery and defeat something else. Fucking I, I'm not a fan of misery and defeat um, or make it so it doesn't actually have to fear the target and uh, make it work at single target. I don't know. I, I, I'm just not a fan of sigils. So, yeah, in my opinion, delete this shit. Um, Master of the Glaive should be up here with Bouncing Glaives. These should be the same. This should be the same talent. Um, at, like Bouncing Glaive should just be a part of Master of the Glaive. Um, I don't know why this isn't a thing. Uh, but that's pretty fucking dog shit. Let's see, improved Fell Rush. This should not be a thing. This should just be baseline with Fell Rush. Fell Rush does fucking negative damage even with this. Um, so if you have us dashing around and shit, you know, just. Give us a little bit of fucking damage with it, please. This thing here, um, Fellfire Haste. I tested this with a weak aura, and double jump glide does more, gives you more speed than the Fellfire Haste after you uh, fell rush. So this thing is pretty fucking useless. Um, increase it to maybe twenty percent uh, or fifteen, and make it a little bit better than. Uh, glide speed and um yeah maybe it might be good um in the middle of the tree i am fine with blind fury i don't like the duration increase you know nobody likes casting in melee uh just does not feel good um so maybe just get rid of the duration increase and increase the damage by um another five percent or something i don't know uh but the duration increase fucking sucks and i don't think anybody likes it um i'm a fan of glaive tempest chaos theory this does not feel good to play with it just does a little bit of extra damage passively um so i've heard some bad things about shattered destiny uh it's another thing where like cycle of hatred where it promotes you know chaos strike spam and just keeping up meta as long as you can but I, I, I kind of like Shattered Destiny, but I think with the direction um, the tier set has gone with uh, throwing glaives that uh, Shattered Destiny probably isn't going to fit too well in, um, in the new, with the new tier set. And I don't think, you know, it'll ever be played with this new tier set. So we'll have to see where you guys take that. One thing that I would like to see addressed uh, if we are going in the direction of throw glaive and going down this right side and left side and um, is fury generation fury generation does not feel good at all um, with this build it always feels like you're kind of just afk waiting for demon blades to proc and give you some fury and um, i think most melee specs nowadays uh, they always have some type of filler to uh, give them you know resources so hopefully fury generation with this uh enemies necessary build will be addressed i think that is it if i can think of anything if you guys can think of anything uh i'll leave it down in the comments you guys leave it down in the comments let me know what you'd like to see changed um i hope i covered everything that you would want to see in this video um if i did make sure to leave a like if you found something useful leave a like 
And uh, yeah, if you like the UI in the video, make sure to check it out in the my Discord. Uh, it's available for patrons, Twitch subs, and Discord supporters. And uh, yeah, links are in the description to everything in there. And, uh, yeah, till next time. Peace. I'm also doing a giveaway. To enter the giveaway, you must be subscribed to the channel and you must post a comment on this video with hashtag 10.2 in it. The winner will receive either a heroic edition of Dragonflight or something off of the Blizzard store. And um, the reward is NA only. So technically if you're EU or whatever, you can enter it, but the reward will be NA only. Uh, so you'll have to put that reward on an NA account. And again, to enter, subscribe to the channel and comment hashtag 10.2.